I would leave the American people with this and a very simple picture. At the end of the day, the man with his finger on the nuclear trigger is a man whose mind is not on his job on a daily basis. That is alarming, and that isn't something that just a handful of folks in the administration felt. So I can't get into too much detail on it, George, but I'm going to tell you this. The president hasn't heard the last of us. In fact, me speaking out yesterday, you could think of it as an opening salvo. And I'm not going to uh, mention any other names yet, but the president can expect that in the coming weeks and months leading up to the election, he is going to hear from more people that served in his administration, and he is going to hear more of them gave the same testimonies that I gave, which is that he's ill-equipped to hold the office that he has and that a second term would be more dangerous than a first term. You'll hear that soon. We are in the election of our lifetimes. And I know we say that every cycle, uh, but that's really what this is. There's no real good time to come out and criticize the president. In fact, for me, I've been accused of this being for fame and for money. Look, in Trump's Washington, this is going to be bad for my pocketbook, bad for my personal life, bad for my career. But right now, what I think is incumbent on all of us, especially Republicans, is that we put country over party. There was an op-ed, there was a book by someone uh, calling themselves anonymous. Are, are you aware of who that is? Uh, I'm not. Look, and I, that was a, uh, a parlor game that happened in Washington, D.C. of a lot of folks trying to think of uh, who that might be. I've got my own thoughts about who that might be, but, uh, you know, I you're want not, my you're not to be on the president, and I certainly don't want to. Uh, I, I wear a mask for two things, Anderson, uh, Halloweens and uh, pandemics. So, no. You said that, that more uh, former administration officials would be joining.